So it's not hard to imagine the goal of chopping down a tree in a game. It's pretty universal. In most games, you would control the character and chop down the tree yourself with an axe. In other games, you might just click on the tree or, or something similar. It doesn't really matter. My point being, you would interact with the tree directly as yourself. Now, I have these trees that I want to chop down, but what I want is for the player to control the thing that is actually chopping down the tree. And I want to do that by sending commands. So here's an example of what this might look like. I have a small terminal window, similar to what would be on an actual computer. If I type in the command chop, the command processes, and the tree is gone. With a grid of trees, it's also pretty trivial to start specifying which trees I want to chop. Pretty cool. And this is as simple as just assigning those actions that I would be doing through clicking or interacting with the tree and just working through them once certain strings and certain commands come through the terminal. And I, I just really love the possibilities here because we just open the door for automation. So what I want to do is go down the path of creating a scripting system for the player. First part is really easy. Basically, we just set up a file that the user can type in, read through the line, or read through the file line by line, and then send all those lines to the same place that I was originally sending the terminal commands. This lets me write commands like chop as many times as I want, and then I can just sit back and watch once the file is running. But that's not enough, right? There's, there's a lot more we can do. To say that the player actually has scripting abilities, they need to be able to control the logic throughout the script, right? There, right now, there is no logic. Everything is extremely static. I would like to make sure they have at least three options, which are kind of the basic logic components of programming. An if statement, for loop, and a while loop. The if statement, if there's a block of code within that statement, it only executes if the statement is true. So we could say something like, if wood is less than 100, chop. The chop, it would only execute if the quantity of wood is less than 100. If it is greater than 100, then we would skip the chop statement completely or whatever else code we, we have contained within that if block. The for loop would just execute over and over for a given range. So if it's five, you know, four, five chop, then there's no logical operation. We just execute the chop command five times. That's, this is kind of the most simple one since there's no logic. The while loop is by far the most complicated, but it, you know, it's definitely still manageable. It's the same at the beginning as the if loop. We evaluate an expression. If it's true, then we execute the block of code that follows. Once that code is finished running, however, the script will then reevaluate the logic back at the start in the while expression. If it's still true, we keep running it. You know, it just keeps looping while the statement is true. So it's very intuitive. Once the statement's false, then we skip over that block of code. We keep going through the script. There are certain parts that are really simple that you can kind of ignore, and that's that's mostly the the actual expressions themselves, and it's helped with the expression class in Godot. Basically, it will evaluate things for you based on the scope that it's in. So if you passed in wood less than 100, the class is smart enough to grab the value for wood within its context and then give you either true or false. So you don't have to worry about kind of parsing that yourself. Extremely helpful. So that part's taken care of. The tricky part is handling the looping within the file, especially when things are nested or if there's a loop within a loop. And that's just what nested means. So I'll run through a couple of tricky scenarios that I kind of got caught up on as I was trying to figure this out, and then I'll show you the solution that I that I ended up coming up with. So the, the first issue is just figuring out how to associate code to a specific logic controller. Let's say we have a while loop. How do I identify what code is within that loop? I started by thinking that I could do it with indentation, similar to Python and GDScript. Pretty early on, I jumped ship on using indentation just because I didn't like dealing with the logic of the indentation. I also didn't like how it was forcing the player to use them. I wanted them to be optional, ideally. You could just, if you wanted to have just kind of a far, you know, justified left file, you could do that even if it's not as pretty. It would all be kind of your options. So I moved on to having in tags for each of the logic controllers. So you'll have a while loop, and then at the end you'll have end while. Whether you use if, for, or while, you're essentially just specifying where that block of code that follows will end. It makes things a lot simpler. Let's say there's a while loop that is true. This means you can keep going through the file until you hit end while, then just step backwards to the start. It definitely works with simple scripts where there's only like one while loop at a time. But whenever there's nesting or while loops within while loops or ifs within ifs, things get a lot more complicated. If there's, if, let's say you have two while loops and the inner one is false. When the script hits the line that contains end while, on the outer while loop, it's going to start walking backwards up through the file looking for 
uh, an associated while. But it's going to find the inner while first, and we need to ignore that one. And then right there, as we start to make these, you know, these decisions and these, oh, we got to ignore this, we got to find this. It's just too complicated, you know. There's got to be a better way of doing it. But I did like having the end tag, so it did lead to a pretty good solution. I feel pretty confident about it. The solution I came to was to make two passes through the file. So I would make an initial pass straight through and store the line numbers of each logic block and its end line. So if I have a while loop on line one and an end while on line three, those values would get stored in a list. As I'm actually executing through the script and I hit line three containing an end while, no longer do I have to walk backwards through the file and ignore things and you know worry about any of that. I simply reference the stored values I set my current line to the one associated with my end while, which is kind of teleport. You know, instead of like stepping backwards until we find what we're looking for, we just set the current line directly to what it needs to be. So much more simple. So after the logic, I still needed to add a way to store variables because a while loop isn't extremely useful if you can't gain a lot of control over the conditions that it's considering. This part was mostly just looking for the var tag within the script and then you would store the name and value in the context of the expression class I mentioned earlier. So now the scripts that the players write will all have access to things like the inventory of the game, you know, that wood variable and stone or whatever else, and then any additional variables that the player defines themselves within the scripts. Finally, after all that work, the player is able to do some pretty cool stuff. Here's a really simple example of just cutting down an entire row of trees within the grid. It's not really possible through just the terminal itself. Now the script can execute while the player moves on to another aspect in the game while that script is executing. It's just amazing. And that's automation, right? That's that's exactly what we want. We want the player to be able to set up these systems, just watch them happen, improve efficiency, love it. The next step would be to add those abilities for the scripts uh, to run, you know, in other ways, like on a schedule. You could you could have a script that runs at the beginning of every day to check for the num you know, the amount of wood and if there needs to be more wood, you could cut down more trees. Or you could have it area-based. You could have a machine that's kind of placed within a certain grid of trees, and it would have different logic than a machine running in another area. Uh, so that's all in the future. I'm, I'm still not 100% sure how complicated this project will get or what it will turn into, but it, it definitely feels like it has potential. So I kind of started working on it so that I would have a playground for videos like this and, and for tutorials, but I'm, I'm just having a blast building out the scripting system, and I just wanted to share it. So... Yeah, I hope it's exciting. Let me know what you think. That's it for this one. Hopefully it wasn't too complicated. I tried to explain things as well as I could. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did or just learned something new, remember to hit the like and subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one.